Hello and welcome to today's video about genetics terms. So we will talk about some terms that are really important for genetics and we will directly start with the term genetics itself. Genetics is a branch of biology that studies heredity and variation. And genetics strongly focuses on genes. And we can directly say what are genes. Genes are segments of DNA that encode for a functional product. And this doesn't have to be a protein in, in all the cases. It can also be a regulatory microRNA. What is important? Genes affect traits and are under selection. If we talk about genes, of course, we also have to talk about alleles. What is an allele? An allele is an alternative form of a gene, or we can also say a variant of a form of a given gene. So we can take the blood type as an example. Genes code for surface proteins. So we have the blood type, let's say we have a gene that encodes for a surface protein. And we have the alleles which encode for different surface proteins. So in this gene region there are certain variants or certain forms of a given gene. And these encode for different surface protein. Such as, if we talk about the AB blood type, we have a gene that is responsible for the blood type surface proteins and we have the A allele and the B allele which are different variants of one gene and they both encode for different proteins. So we have our red blood cell here as you can see and now we assume we have two versions of the A allele and you can already see we have only the A surface protein expressed. If we would assume we have two B allele versions so we have the B surface protein expressed. We talk a lot about genes and about alleles, but what is a gene pool? In population genetics, it is the set of all possible alleles in a population. If we talk about a small gene pool, that means there is not much genetic diversity. So there are only a few different alleles. What is a genotype? A genotype is the combination of two alleles at one locus. And we have an example, of course. We have a diploid organism, like we human for example, and we have alleles that are either A, the huge A and the little a. So the genotype is huge A, little a. The genotype will affect traits of an organism. And what is a trait? A trait is a characteristic of an organism. And that can be either morphological, it can be physiological or it can be behavioral. Another term that we should have in mind is the phenotype. The phenotype is defined as the set of observable characteristics of an organism and that results from interaction of its genotype with the environment. As an example of the phenotype we have the flower color here. We can see the pea plant has a white phenotype flower color. Often we will hear the term locus. A locus is a location or a position of a certain DNA sequence. That means it could be the position of a gene on a chromosome, for example. Earlier we defined that alleles are variants of given genes. Now we will talk about the dominant allele. A dominant allele is the variant of a given gene that produces a specific phenotype even if another allele affects a locus. The dominant allele expresses its trait and completely masks the recessive allele in a heterozygous organism. As an example, we can take the crosses Mandel performed over 100 years ago. So he crossed true breeds with each other. Um, we can see here he crossed the big R, big R with the little r, little r, both homozygous. And the big R, big R encoded for purple flower color. The little r, little r encoded for white flower color. And we could see that the offspring, which is all heterozygous, is purple. So we can see here in the heterozygous offspring that all have purple colored flowers. And the purple color of the offspring is exactly the same as from the father or mother, which is a huge r, huge r. The dominant allele completely masks the recessive one in a heterozygous organism. So what is a recessive allele? So a recessive trait is only expressed if there are two recessive alleles. And we take the same example. So we see here the, the breeding experiment of Mendel and we see that the white color is only expressed in one case and was only expressed when 
the gene had little r, little r. That means it is a recessive trait and can only be expressed when the big R is absent. The next term we will talk about is the term polygenic trait. So a polygenic trait is a trait that is controlled by several different genes or loci. We have the human height as an example. Scientists revealed that hundreds of different loci affect height. That means that it's pretty hard to do breeding experiments with polygenic traits. What is pleiotropy? Pleiotropy is if a pair of alleles on a single locus affects more than one trait. And as an example we have pigmentation here. In the usual case we have the enzyme called tyrosinase which modifies tyrosine to melanin. And melanin is a certain and really specific and important product for pigmentation. But if the allele of tyrosinase is mutated, we don't have the melanin product anymore. And melanin plays a role not only in the skin pigmentation, it also has an effect in the eye pigmentation. And we see it here at the albino snake, for example. You can see the albino snake is white, but you can also see that the eyes are red. So, so it, it is not only one trait that is affected by tyrosinase. It are more than one traits. Let's talk about epistasis. Epistasis is if a gene expressed on one locus affects the expression of a gene on another locus. We have pigmentation here again as an example. We see the first genes, both alleles and code for pigmentation. And if the products of the pigmentation alleles are expressed, they influence the color. The pigmentation alleles are important for expressing the certain color. Meaning that if we have a deleterious mutation on the pigmentation allele, so we have no pigmentation anymore, the color from the second locus also is not expressed. To resume it quickly, if one gene expressed on one locus affects the expression of another gene from a second locus, we call it epistasis. What are SNVs? SNVs are single nucleotide variants. And SNVs are variations that occur in only one single base pair in the genome. Here we see the reference genome and we see a mutation below. That is a point mutation that only occurs in one single base pair. And this is an SNV, single nucleotide variant. Now we talk about an SNP. A single nucleotide polymorphism is a variation in only one single base pair in the genome. But to be called an SNP, it has to occur in at least 1% of the human genome. I was talking about dominant alleles earlier, but I will just quickly resume what complete dominance is, because we need it for the following explanations. So complete dominance is defined as one allele that completely masks the other one and is fully expressed in a heterozygote. So we already had this example. You can see the heterozygous offspring has fully expressed huge R alleles. Now it makes sense why I explained it again. We will talk about incomplete dominance now. And incomplete dominance is if a heterozygous phenotype is an intermediate between the two homozygous ones. We see here the purple flower and the white flower, which are both true breeds, are crossed with each other and the intermediate phenotype is a mixture between the purple and the white allele. That means if we have incomplete dominance, we can consider it a non-Mendelian trait. The next term I will talk about is codominance. And codominance occurs if both alleles are fully expressed. We have the AB blood type again. So if we have AB blood type, so we have the A and the B allele. That is an example of codominance, since both the A and the B allele are fully expressed, so both self-surface proteins we can find on our erythrocytes. Going to sex linkage. Sex linkage can be applied to genes that are located on the sex chromosomes. We take red-green colorblindness as an example here. Colorblindness is X-linked, meaning it's located on the X chromosome. A sex influence trait is something different. Sex influence traits are traits whose phenotypic expression is affected by the sex of the individual. The responsible genes are located on the autosomes. We take facial hair as an example. 
Gene environment interactions play a huge role since, for example, only male have a beard. But the gene is in both organisms, both female and male. We can only find a beard or the phenotype of a beard in the male organism. And that is because of gene environment interactions. Such as it can be dependent on hormone concentrations. To resume it quickly, a sex influence trait is a trait whose phenotypic expression is affected by the sex of the individual. We can talk about genetic linkage now. Genetic linkage occurs if we have some gamete ratios that differ from our predicted Mendelian law of independent assortment. So genetic linkage is if genes are on the same chromosome and genetically close to each other. That means only a few recombinations occur between them. In the case of genetic linkage, two genes tend to be inherited together. Here we have two genes. We have the A gene and the B gene. And these genes are on the same chromosome and we can see they are quite close to each other. But since they are so close to each other, we get certain different per percentages and not the Mendelian ratio. And here we can see that the cases of recombination are quite few. If we have this example and find nearly no recombination, the genes are genetically linked. We take the same example to define a genetic map unit. So we can see here in our example we have 2% recombinant gametes. And 2% recombinance means 2 map units, which also means 2 centimorgans. Centimorgan is a unit to define genetic distance. We now know from our example that in the case of only two recombinants, the A and the B gene are two centimorgans distant from each other. And we can conclude now that the gene A and the B gene are tightly linked. To resume, a genetic map unit is a unit to measure genetic distance on a chromosome. And to calculate it, we use recombination frequencies. So in the end I got one question. In the case of 100% recombinants, meaning that 100 centimorgan are between two genes, what does it say about the distance between the genes? And you can stop this video here and think about it and then I will just explain what is the answer. So the answer is the genes are not linked. And with this I thank you for watching. I hope it was helpful and feel free to ask some questions in the comments. See you!